Hi there guys, Kane back here and welcome to this channel. Today we will have a really cool hike from one picturesque village named Guys to another named Trogan. So we'll hike all the way up to a very beautiful mountain, Gabris. From there we will see a great view over most of the Alpstein region. So all of the mountains we normally visited uh, before in Alpstein region, Abenalp and many others, we will be able to see from afar here. We'll visit a very nice inn. We'll have some coffee, which was really good because the weather was quite windy, so hot coffee was just what doctors recommended. Then we'll see a bit of um, beautiful landscapes of Switzerland, have some wild raspberries, see some more of the gorgeous sky, and then finish it up with a beautiful village named Trogen and its gorgeous church. So we'll start our today's hike with Guys. Guys is a village in canton of Appenzell Außerrodden. Yes, Außerrodden, not Innerrodden. There are two of those. Later I'll tell you the story. And in 1977 this particular village actually received worker prize for development and preservation of architectural heritage. The village square that you can see right now, its church, former hotel and Kron, most of these were built in the end of 1700s, are actually listed at ha as heritage sites of national significance. It's uh, super interesting that in Switzerland, a lot of even the villages have their heritage sites of national significance. So Village Guys was first mentioned as offerings, yes, like a gift, offerings to the Abbey of St. Gallen in 1272. So here you can see also the coat of arms of Guys, this lovely looking goat. Uh, with interesting red pointy thingy. Um, that's actually quite common for Switzerland. Almost every single coat of arms would have uh, that particular point. Um, not sure what's the point, the strength, the power, the authority, I don't know. Make your own guess if you want to share in the comments, would be interesting to know what do you think. So in terms of difficulty of the hike, this is yellow, this is virtually the easiest hike in terms of endurance and stamina that it requires. It's again, nothing too difficult, but it is tiring as always, dress in layers, have enough water with you. No need to carry all of the water with you necessarily because as I pointed out, there are lots of water fountains unless stated specifically that it's not for drinking. Generally speaking, it will be okay to drink. So be sure to stay hydrated. But yeah, totally worth the climb. You will, we will see amazing views over the mountains. As Nietzsche put it, he who climbs upon the highest mountains love at all tragedies, real or imaginary. Certainly something I could relate to. Every time I climb up to the mountains, um, the head somehow feels clearer, the life somehow feels better, and the troubles seem more insignificant. So now we're pretty much making our way up to the small mountain called Gabris. And here you can see a lot of the rural beauties of Switzerland. There are lots of inns on the way. All of them are generally available and usually have capacity. But of course, um, make sure in advance, uh, try to book. They usually don't have websites, but if you find their phone numbers, you can call and book the room directly. Uh, the prices range from somewhere between 100 to 150 Swiss francs. At the inn that we're going to see just in a moment, the price was 120 Swiss francs at the time of the recording, which is roughly 130 or so US dollars. That's including the breakfast. So a fairly good deal for gorgeous view and being in Switzerland. I think nothing really is, is affordable here, truly. <laughs> We 
we were actually hiking right after the Independence Day of Switzerland, the celebration like the Swiss Day, and um, you could see lots and lots of Swiss flags all over the place. And that actually, I think, really shows how patriotic Swiss really are, because on the day and for the whole week after the day, you would see flags everywhere, even you know, like throughout the hike, there will be Swiss flags on literally every single corner. So now we actually made it to the height of it. This is the highest point of this hike. So now you can see pretty much the entirety of the Alpstein region. So all of the gorgeous mountains that we've been visiting in Appenzell, we could see from here. Eventually we made it to a lovely inn with a really good restaurant. We had some coffee and some pastries, hot coffee and a pastry on a windy day after a climb was really a godsend gift. I was so happy. They also had like super comfortable chairs overlooking the gorgeous mountains. So I thought the place was absolutely fantastic and reasonably priced. We haven't stayed yet, but I'm really looking forward to staying one day. But if you beat me to it, please let me know in the comments below how it was. <laughs> it would be interesting to hear from a first-hand experience. So this is the inn itself, a fairly traditional Swiss building, very nice inside, super clean, super lovely. Uh, lots of good food and those chairs. Oh my God, those chairs. I, when I sat on them, I just didn't want to get off because <laughs> the views were so great and it was actually really, really comfortable. In terms of how to make the best out of your Swiss experience, I would highly recommend staying in one of these guest houses overlooking the mountains, either here or on any other inn in the Alpstein region. Why I'm recommending this? Because the mountains in the sky obviously vary significantly from hour to hour. Sunset, sunrise on the mountains would be truly an unforgettable experience. The only difficulties that I usually find is the fact that they're not generally listed in Expedia or any other commonly used booking websites. So for that, I recommend going to Appenzelle Land. There's a website called Appenzelle Land, and there you could download the brochure that actually would give um, the map of Alpstein, for example, and it would give you the locations of different inns and the corresponding phone numbers. So the best bet is to actually find the phone number, call them, make a reservation via the phone, because again, they're fairly small, they're not as well connected <laughs> to the rest of the world. Once you make a booking, you know, you're ready to go. So now the hike is getting easier and it's downhill from here, but the views are not getting any worse. I think, I don't know, in Switzerland there are no bad views, I guess. So they're gorgeous regardless of where you're going. Um, yeah, recommending, I would recommend trying the berries. I mean, if, if you know what berries you can eat, but obviously raspberries are okay to eat and black raspberries as well. They're very tasty unless you have some, you know, other fears. I do eat them. Again, I'm not a doctor, not an expert, but they're the tastiest I've ever had in my life. So far, so good. Never got any food poisoning or any other issues with that. So now we'll briefly share with you a little bit of Appenzell history. So we are in the Appenzell canton that is divided into two sub-half cantons. If you ask them, they will tell you they are complete cantons, but well, <laughs> 
who am I to argue? Appenzell is entirely surrounded by the present-day St. Gallen Canton, right? So it was first mentioned, the St. Gallen Canton, that is, in 1071 as the Abatis Cellar. And hence we have Appenzell. Appenzell means Abatis Cell, or estate of the abbot, referring to the uh, St. Gallen, the abbot of the St. Gallen. So in early 1377, the portion of Abatis domains formed an alliance. We're talking about open cell right now with Schwabian free imperial cities and adopted constitution of its own. If you look through the Swiss history, you would see a lot of fights for independence. A lot of it was successful. Knowing that today Switzerland is a neutral country, it sort of describes it in no way historically. Historically. Switzerland was a bloodbath for independence, which obviously we could see working fairly well today because country is, you know, gorgeous and well off and a lot of it is due to the governmental system that actually works. So the region defended itself against the abbots, against the St. Gallen Canton, in the Appenzell War between the 1403 and 1410. In 1411, they were placed under the protection of Swiss Confederation and they became an actual member of Swiss Confederation in 1513. So religious, is, uh, religious beliefs is the factor that actually divided Appenzell into two cantons. After the Reformation, that led to the division of Canton of Appenzell in 1597 into two independent half cantons, Appenzell in Hoden, that's where the Alpstein region is, where we've been a lot already, because it's predominantly Roman Catholic, and then Appenzell Außerhoden, where we are right now, and it is predominantly Protestant. So now we are in one of my favorite small towns here named Trogen. Trogen is a town or a village in the canton of Appenzell Außerhoden. It's also a seat of Canton's judicial authority. The first mention of Trogen was in 1168 as Trogen, and the name Trogen refers to the number of fountains, Trogen, or fountains, from German, which reflected in the coat of arms. You can see this lovely bear with, again, the red pointy thingy bathing in the fountain. In 18th century, the village was dominated by a local oligarchs, <laughs> kidding, by local wealthy family Selvige. And Selvige family enjoyed a great success with textile production and trade families family established grammar schools and the other charitable organizations in 1800s. So the church is actually located right next to Selvige Palace um, and both were built in the end of 18th and beginning of 19th century. Trogon in many ways gets its beauty from the many regular rows of timber frame houses, very beautiful dwellings that were built by farmers, artisans and merchants uh, around the streets and lanes, lanes of the town's square. Also Trogon is famous for its many wonderful hiking trails, one of which we actually took, one of the most famous ones, exactly the one that we took. You can also take it obviously from Trogon through Gobris to Guys. Uh, gorgeous views I certainly would recommend. And the Trogan itself has many more hikes, closer and shorter hikes, simpler hikes. All right, guys, but that would be pretty much all that I wanted to share with you for this hike. I loved it. As always, I only share the hikes that I absolutely loved. <laughs> Nothing that I didn't like I would ever share. So we highly recommend it if you're visiting Up and Sell. That would be a great hike to try. If you do try it, leave in the comments below. It would be interesting to know how you liked it. Thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed the video, please put the thumbs up. It really means the world to every content creator. Also, if you like such content, please consider subscribing. I try to post um, every week. At the very least, I post every week and hopefully see you again soon. Bye.